As you may be aware, we recently released this past year the edition two of the technical manual, Shamer Technical Manual for pre-stressed concrete bridge beams. And it's a very, very valuable tool for both the preliminary design and the detailed design of pre-stressed concrete bridge beams. And again, this would just not just be for bridge applications, but for other applications of bridge beams, pre-stressed bridge beams as well. For the detailed design of any of these beams, uh, knowledge of the, the section properties of the relevant beams is essential. So we've spelled that out clearly, contained, all relevant section properties are clearly contained for all of the different beam types as well in the manual. Um, also, we've got the uh, typical dimensions, which correspond to the section properties, of course. And we've also got typical details as well, too. Typical um, details both in situ, details that are used, and also critically as well, we also have the, the standard shear link arrangement and also the available pre-stressing strand layout, the available locations of where you can locate pre-stressing strands is given as well. There's also information on the back in the uh, design notes, the bridges, bridge designer's checklist, which also verbally indicates some, some in pertinent information to the detailed design of pre-stressed concrete bridge beams. With regard to preliminary design, we've produced Eurocode compatible span tables for each of our bridge beam types as well too. And these are typically given for a variety of beam centers. Um, and the, the span tables themselves, these are the maximum achievable span for a specific size of a certain beam at a specific beam center for most of the beams. These span tables are necessarily conservative, so they're based on conservative assumptions that have been used in the uh, preliminary design estimate of what, the, what spans these beams can achieve. Those assumptions, those design assumptions, are also contained in the back of the, uh, of the manual as well, too. Assumptions and design criteria for the span table. So a lot of these assumptions are conservative by nature, and there are many occasions, depending upon the structural characteristics and the type of loading you may have relevant to your, your bridge or your structure, where the available spans, the achievable spans, can actually increase significantly relative to what is indicated in the span tables. And we also have a, a section as well, too, on rail applications. Um, the span tables given in the technical manual are relevant to, to road applications, but uh, certainly um, they can certainly be used for, for rail applications or for a variety of applications. And we would strongly encourage designers, when using the manual, if you do have a specific query, with regard to a specific beam type and what span it can achieve, what it's capable of, um, what span it can achieve under a rail application, a road application, any other application at all that you, you would contact the technical department and we'd be very happy to, to work with you on refining your preliminary design analysis and providing any support um, beyond what is already contained in the technical manual for the detailed design of pre-stressed concrete bridge beams.